One more time. His voice. His voice makes the difference. When he speaks. When he speaks, he relieves my trouble mind. It's the only voice. And I'll follow. And I'll follow one day at a time. It's the only voice I hear. It's the only voice I hear. And it makes no difference. And I'll follow one day at a time. Let's just lift our hands and worship him. Let's give him an evening sacrifice this evening. Every now and then I just try to look back and see how far I've come from. And just give him thanks for it. Because if he never does another thing for me he did enough at Calvary let's just lift our hands and thank him for what he did at Calvary for us we couldn't do it for ourselves no one could do it for us but God came down and gave himself for us so that we can be redeemed so that we can be saved Hallelujah. So let's sing this evening. Roll back the curtains of memory now and then.
for victory.
But he chose me. But he chose me. Why he chose me. Jesus chose me. Jesus chose me with him alone. Jesus chose me with him alone. Let's just lift our hands and worship him. Hallelujah. Let's just put our hands together and sing one more song before the opening hymn. Well, I said I wouldn't tell it to a living soul. Well, I said I wouldn't tell it to a living soul. I'll be brought to salvation and he made me whole. I, I found I couldn't hide such love as Jesus. Oh, oh, he makes me laugh and he makes me cry. He set my sinful soul on fire. Verse it said, When God dipped his pen of love in my heart and write my soul a message, he wants me to know his spirit so divine. He set my sinful soul on fire. Hallelujah. When God Let's do it again. My heart was distressed. 
Jesus. Just lift your hands 
and just close your eyes and just to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Just reflect on how he brought you out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve tonight. Hallelujah. We bless your name, mighty God. Hallelujah. Faithful God. And we're going to be praying tonight. Amen. And we know that we serve a God who hears and answers prayer. Hallelujah. And there are two requests tonight. We have um, Sister Eunice Blackwood who is in the University Hospital, Ward 18. And we also have um, prayer request for Brother O'Neill Dixon. He was right under fellowship in the last right hand fellowship service. Amen. His father was shot. He and his girlfriend and they're admitted in the Black River Hospital. Amen. So we're not certain of how critical the situation is, but we know that God is able. Amen. And without a doubt, there are persons inside this building tonight who are in need of the Lord's touch. Amen. And so I'm just going to invite you to just hold hands with somebody and we're going to be praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. King of kings. Hallelujah. Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. And we pause. Hallelujah. Just to acknowledge you, God. Hallelujah. We have been singing this song. God, you brought us out. Hallelujah. Of the miry clay. Hallelujah. God, you placed our feet upon a rock. Mighty God. And we want to tell you thanks tonight. Hallelujah. God, each of us tonight I can just reflect on where we were before we met you Lord Jesus and oh what a dark place it must have been but tonight we can identify with light hallelujah and Lord Jesus we have the privilege of coming to your house and crying Abba Father what a privilege hallelujah what a privilege Lord Jesus we thank you God for looking beyond our faults and seen our need, great God of heaven, our need of you as savior, as friend, as comforter. Lord Jesus, tonight, just like another Sunday night, but we know, God Almighty, this is a Sunday night we'll never see again. But we are pausing just to say, Jesus, we expect, hallelujah, you to do what only you can do, Lord Jesus. Great God of heaven, you are mighty and you are strong and we pray hallelujah that you will do an extra ordinary thing tonight we ask you to walk through this place mighty God every bench the eye Lord Jesus you know the need of each and every person who stand in this building great God almighty and what amazes me God is in spite of our need there are those of us who need a healer whether it's physical, spiritual emotional God and mighty, you are not confused. You can minister to us in such a way, Lord Jesus, that God, you will not limit your resources because God, you have it in abundance. There are those persons, God, who may need deliverance. But in the name of Jesus tonight, we know that you are mighty to deliver. You are the mighty deliverer, Jesus. So whatever the circumstances are, tonight we're asking you, Jesus, just to have your way. God, Almighty, curb you this place with the presence of your angels. God Almighty, break every fetter. Hallelujah. Jesus, break every fetter. God Almighty. Hallelujah. Every access point of the enemy tonight. Every door. Hallelujah. Every window. God Almighty. There shall be no distraction, God, because we're looking to you. Maybe there's that young man or young lady who just decide to come, mighty God, out of ritual tonight but God I pray that you will meet him or you'll meet her at the place Jesus where he or she needs you most because God we understand that we're living in terrible days and there are those of us God who are getting weak but in the name of Jesus God we're standing in the gap for each other we're asking you God to strengthen tonight Lord Jesus to strengthen God we come representing Lord Jesus Jesus, Sister Blackwood, who has been admitted in the hospital. God, we don't know the condition, but we know, Lord Jesus, that you're able to be there with her even now and be here with us, Lord Jesus. God, we pray for favor. We ask that you'll instruct the hearts of those.
those nurses, those ward attendants, the God Almighty as your child, Lord Jesus, she will be taken care of in such a way, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, because she's a royal priesthood, God Almighty, remember Odile Dixon, hallelujah, God, his father, hallelujah, and his girlfriend, God, they were shot, they're not in the hospital, Lord Jesus, but we know you also specialize in gunshot wounds, so in the name of Jesus, we pray tonight, God, that your perfect will will be accomplished, hallelujah, wrap your loving arms around every family member, God Almighty, in this time, hallelujah, Lord Jesus, and we commit this service into your hand, hallelujah, hallelujah, every aspect of it, God, because we know everything must be done to give you honor, to give you glory, hallelujah, so we're just praising you, God, with a heart of expectancy, hallelujah, let your perfect will be accomplished, hallelujah, we give you thanks, God, hallelujah, we give you glory, hallelujah, we give you honor, and we say in thanks in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, let us just worship the Lord, and say in Jesus' name, after 212, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, we praise you, mighty God, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. While we continue to worship, I'll be reading in your hearing from 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 to the end. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, Forbidding to marry and commanding to obtain from meat, which God hath created, to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained, but refuse profane and old wives, old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having... Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. You may be seated in the house of God. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Praise God. It's good to be with the people of God one more time. Amen. Oh, Lord, God is good. God is good. God is good. I'd just like to take this time just to welcome everyone that is here at the service tonight. Praise God. I know sometimes it is so difficult for us to come back at evening service, but to God be the glory. Praise God. We were able to get up and get ready and come to service. Amen. Praise God. Is there anyone with us, any visitors with us tonight? Praise God. Can you stand? Any visitors? Praise God, we want to acknowledge you tonight. Praise God. God is still a good God. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. 
just a few reminders. This Saturday, the 9th of August, we'll be having our fun day. Can somebody say amen to that? Praise God. No. You need, if you're desirous of going to the fun day, you need to give your names tonight. Praise God to any member or person of the fellowship ministry. Sister Stacy? No? Brother Marky? Praise God. Or you can give your names to any member of the youth committee. We pass it on. Amen? Praise God. That's if you desire of going to the fun day. Amen? We also like to remind you of our youth summit. Praise God. That will be held the 14th of August to the 17th. Now, we want to extend a special invitation to everyone. Now, sometimes when we hear the word youth, some persons tend to remove themselves. But I want you to know that we are inviting everyone. Everyone. We're asking everyone to come and support the Youth Summit. Amen? Amen? So even if you're 70 years old, don't mind the word youth. Come. Praise God. Amen? Right here at Pentecostal Tabernacle. Amen? We're going to ask our ushers just to come right now. Praise God. We're going to be giving to the Lord. Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Let us just pray for the offering as they come. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love and your many mercies. We thank you for your grace. Lord God, you are good. You are faithful to us. And I pray, God, that tonight you will touch the hearts of your people. That they will give as they have to give. King Jesus, and remember those who desire to give but are unable to give. I pray that you will touch them. That their situation may change. That one day they'll be able to give. Touch the offering. Bless it tonight, God. Multiply, Jesus. That it may be used. God Almighty, for the work of your kingdom. To save souls, Lord God. We give you honor. We give you praise. And we give you glory. God, and we tell you thanks. For what we will receive tonight. In the name that is above every other name. And can we say in Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, the offering has been received. Praise God. Oh, what a friend, what a precious friend. So complete and so divine. And if you walk this whole world over, there's no other you can find. Oh, what a friend, what a precious friend. So complete and so divine. And if you walk this whole world over, there's no Come on, let us sing this song. Oh, what a friend, what a precious friend. So complete and so divine. And if you walk this whole world over, there's no other you can find. Oh, what a friend, what a precious friend. So complete and so divine.
Forgive me. Just before we go any further, I'd like to engage us in a little exercise. If you will turn to Psalm 100, we're going to read that together. Because it's going to set the precedence of what we are supposed to be doing. Amen? Amen. All right. After 2, 1, 2. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with? Come before his presence with? Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath, and not we are. We are his, and the sheep of his pastors. Therefore... I'd like us to read that part again. After 2, 1, 2, it says what? Enter into his gates and courts with what? Into his courts with what? Be thankful unto him and why? Uh huh. His mercy is and to all generations. All right, that's number one. Number two, Psalm 150. Let us go. After two, one, two. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. So hold on, that means all the things that God has done that is amazing, right? Praise him for his mighty acts. What else? All right, so that part means even if God has not done anything for us and we came here with a hungry belly, just because God is God, he deserves to be praised. Amen? All right, verse 3 says what? Praise him with the of the trumpet praise him with the and harp okay so because we don't have any sultry and harp our ten fingers are going to have to do tonight right? amen praise him with the timbrel and dance praise him with stringed instruments and organs praise him upon the praise him upon the and then verse 6 tells us something astounding. Let us go. Up to two, one, two. Let everything praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So this is what we're going to do for the next two minutes. We're not going to sing a song. We're just going to give God worship or unique worship. I'm going to invite the, the musicians to get on their instruments and just to worship God in their instruments. And people of God, we're just going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. We're, we are going to do what the Bible tells us to do. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord.
Oh boy, I feel excited. I was asked to testify. Um, when I was asked, I didn't know what to testify about, so I'll testify what I know. All right? All right. So, 
at the age of nine or ten, I was introduced to this thing called Bible quiz. At about ten, I remember one particular incident. I wasn't studying, and the, the, the persons in charge, they told my mother, and her course of action was that she'd punish me to study. So she'd put me in a corner with a manual, and I'd have to be there for one hour, and I'd have to study. And I remember that particular year, I remember many tears because I was being punished and get beaten sometimes too. And I remember that particular year, I found myself in the top five, and I ran home. When I, when I went home, and I ran to my mother and hugged her and told her thanks for all the beating and the punishment and all of that. And that's the only time I've ever thanked her for that. But notwithstanding, God has been really good to me by allowing me to do this. I've been told before that all I know how to study for is quiz, which is true, because I'm not particularly a huge fan of studying for school, but I do it because it is necessary. But I have developed a love for this thing. I can attest to the fact that because of Bible quiz, I have a Bible studying life, right? Somebody told me that, well, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, all right? So when you study the Word, and you get the Word in your system, that is synonymous with, with, with getting to know God and getting God in your system. So you cannot lose by studying the Bible. This year in particular was an extremely good year for me. Not just because of all the trophies and the prizes. That, that was good. That was very good. God bless. Um, but this year, it was almost as though the word took on life. And it became so animated in my life. And I am grateful and I'm grateful for, 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 for having a chance to study the book of John. You know, there, there, there are passages that I studied. And I could feel my heart breaking because I could feel the rebuke of the Lord. And then there were instances where I, I, felt, I felt as though, though my heart was encouraged because I felt the hope that the word gives. So even though... There, there is chastisement. There's still love. And you feel as though no matter how low you go, there's still love enough to get a hold of you. So I am encouraging you, all of you here, you know, send out your children. Get them acquainted with the word. I am still in church today because I have a wonderful support system. And Bible quiz is one of them. There are hard times coming. And I know that those who have the word inside them will be grounded. Those children who have the word inside them, they will stay at age 20, 21, 22, when, I guess, the world becomes more attractive. You, you will find that because they have substance, these are, are they that will last. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, well, similar to, um, to Chad's testimony, um, tonight when Sanjal came to me and asked me if I was in a position to testify, I was like, no, Sanjal, I'm not in a position to testify. I don't even want to come up here. But she said, think about it. And while sitting there, um, immediately a scripture that I studied for Bible quiz came to me. It's from Revelations. And it said, they, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. So I'm like, all right, God, I will go. But, you know, you have to tell me what to do, what to say. And while she was here, you know, um, you know saying what she was saying, um, I was around the back. And I was just worshiping. And two testimonies came to my mind. And... The, before I say it, the moral is that whenever you don't feel to do something, especially when it's pertaining to God, that's when you must do it because there's a victory at the end of it. I remember, I won't go in, you know, details, but my, one of my semester courses, I could not do the mid-semester exams because of school fee. And... I was really torn because I prayed and I said, all right, then, yes, I'm going with faith. 
and still nothing when they swipe my card. They told me that I'm not eligible to go in the exam room. So I said, you know what, fine. And then I went and I prayed, but I was still, you know, discouraged because I'm like, God, after all that praying, you still do, you know, come through for me. And I never wanted to continue. I, want, I was going to do the course, but in terms of the effort that I was going to put out, I did not want to put out as much effort because of, not, because of me not sitting the mid-semester exams. And that was worth, I think, 30%. Um, and I was just, you know, very, almost lackadaisical towards it. But I remember, you know, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I was like, you know, fine, this must be a test. So I'm going to go all out on this. And I studied, I did everything I went to lecturers for them to help me because I say, no, Lord, I must get an A on this. Even though you never make me do the exam, I must get an A. And I remember um, one time the lecturer just say, we must go to such and such a person to do the mid-semester that we missed. So I'm like, um, okay, fine. At least this would be an easy A. And I went and it so happened that it was a run around thing, right? So the lecturer, whoever he sent me to, they, they never existed, quote unquote. And I was even more depressed. But either ways, I went and I continued and it so happened that I just went to the wrong person and it was actually so that they were going to give a receipt for the mid-semester. When I did it, I got A on it, right? So that's a plus to go into the finals. Now going into the finals, I... Even, I prepared even more because, you know, now that I get to do it, I'm over, you know, excited and all of that. So I said, all right then, going in there. When the results came out, I went in there, did my best, came out. When the results came out, um, I looked at it, and when I saw it, I was like, you know, whatever God does, it is well done. Because when I looked at it, I got an A+. Plus. Not just an A or an A-, minus, but an A+. Plus. And I'm like... Okay, so this is what you wanted to teach me? All right, let's learn, right? And then um, I looked at my other grades. Not that they were bad, they weren't bad at all, right? But that was the one that stood out to me. And I'm like, you know, God, you're really good. And I think I kind of get the hang of this faith thing. But, <laughs> right. So, Bible quiz now. While studying and going to school and all of that, I was... I. Studying the, the, the verses, were, they weren't sticking in my mind. So, you know, I said, you know, God, I can't bother with this. Like, I'm just done with this. I went to Uncle Leslie and I said, Uncle Leslie, I don't think I can continue with Bible quiz. You know, it's just not working out with me. And then he said, no, man, just continue and study and all of that. I said, all right, then fine. So what I started to do now was that before I started to study, I said, Lord Jesus, Every verse that I'm going to study, please, my begin make it stuck in my mind. And up until this day, it is still there. And um, I remember, and it's more than one time, that's the funny thing. Many nights I've stayed up trying to study and just nothing until I, I've gotten so fed up where I'm, I'm sure, I'm almost sure I started to cry, almost. But... Um, when I went to the competitions, I was very nervous, the other quiz members can tell you I was nervous, like I almost didn't know myself, but when I went around the board and I started to get one right, I said, all right, get the hang of this, right? So then it continued, and then when we went, but they, there were other quizzes that were very good, right? So when we went to sit down and they were calling out the top six, I'm like, um, all right, God, here's the thing. You see, if you're going to put me in the top six, I need you to make them ask questions from Revelations and 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, right? And because that's all I really knew, right? But, um, and I went, and then I heard my name called. So I'm like, them just a money gram? Anyways, I went up there. 
Because I say, yes, man, God, I know you're you going to make them ask from that man. So um, when I went, the quest, I think it was the second question or so, came from First John, and then First John again, and then Revelation. So I said, all right, yes, at least we can come up and I look, you know, probably top three, there was. And then, no, I never, underst- I never understood the whole scoring thing. So Matthew Royal was my coach, and I'm like, so how them do this thing? Is it that you just them, um, add up some scores from before? And then he's like, no, man, it's whatever you score. No. Some say, really? Some say, we can't come second then. All right, then. And then everybody started to laugh. So I'm like, why are you laughing? I can't come second. Hmm. Um, when I turn on and I said back in competition, and they asked a question from 3rd John, cross-reference. And I didn't remember the first part. So luckily, my little friend from um, Lighthouse, he interrupted the question, and he unfortunately got it wrong, but he reminded me of the first part. <laughs> so, <laughs> so after that, no, I was like, all right, thank you, Jesus. Yes, we can get the one here. And then, no. And the thing is, the funny thing, um, I was trailing him by five points. So if I had buzzed and got it incorrect, then he would have played second. But, you know, a boss can say, yes, I know this. And when I answered it, and they said, correct, I was like, yes, second place, right? And then um, on top of that, too, our team won. So I'm like, I was just looking back over everything, and I'm like, God, you know, you're really good, because I have been... Um, demotivated so many times, you know, didn't want to do anything at all, but um, I don't even know it's what, but all I know is that God was there for me. He never left me, even though sometimes it feels, it felt as though I was all alone, you know, but I want to thank him tonight for always being there for me and always reminding us that faith is what will pull us through and that at the end of a war or battle, there is a victory. Amen? Amen. Oh, Lord, my God, when I know some wonder, consider all the world I have made. I see the stars. I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder. The music. Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul. Can we all just lift our voices and sing? My Savior God to me. How great thou art. How great thou art. How great thou art. My soul, then sings my, my soul. soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! We're going to sing it again without the music, but this time I'm just going to ask the praise singers just to step back from the mic a little and let us as a congregation sing unto this mighty God. Then sings our soul. How great thou art. I wonder if you, we could just stand together and sing this unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Then sings my Oh. 
Continue to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on and worship Him tonight. We serve an incredible God. Oh, hallelujah. I've had some problems, some great and some small. You being God, deliver me from the more.
impossible. He makes ways out of nowhere. He provides school fee when there is no school fee. He fixes broken hearts. He gives life when you should be dead.
open your mouth and begin to tell the Lord thank you. We're thanking him by faith because we have declared in this house that he is incredible. So we know that he's going to deliver on his promise. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Could we just lift our hands one more time and just give God glory? He is indeed worthy of all honor and praise. Thank you, Jesus. You are the only God and there will never be another. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is indeed a good God. Amen? Amen. And we just need to continue to give him the glory and the honor and the praise. Amen? Amen. I'd just like to read to you from Hebrews chapter 4. Amen. Amen. It says, although God's promise, promise still stands, his promise that all may enter his place of rest, we ought to tremble with fear because some of you may be on the verge of falling to get there after all. For this wonderful news, the message that God wants to save us, has been given to us just as it was to those who lived in the time of Moses. But it didn't do them any good because they didn't believe it. They didn't mix it with faith. For only we who believe God can enter into his place of rest. He has said, I have sworn in my anger that those who don't believe me will never get in, even though he has been ready and waiting for them since the world began. We know he is ready and waiting because it is written that God rested on the seventh day of creation, having finished all that he had planned to make. Even so, they didn't get in, for God finally said, they shall never enter my rest. Yet the promise remains and some get in but not those who had the first chance, for they disobeyed God and failed to enter. But he has set another time for coming in, and that time is now. He announced this through King David long years after man's first failure to enter, saying in the words already quoted, Today, when you hear him calling, do not harden your hearts against him. This new place of rest he is talking about does not mean the land of Israel that Joshua led them into. If that were what God meant, he would not have spoken long afterwards about today being the time to get in. So there is a full complete rest still awaiting for the people of God. Christ has already entered there. He is resting from his work just as God did after the creation. Let us do our best to get to go into that place of rest, to being careful not to disobey God as the children of Israel did, thus, for, thus failing to get in. For whatever God says to us is full of living power. It is sharper than the sharpest dagger, cutting swift, and deep into our innermost thoughts and desires with all their parts, exposing us for what we really are. He knows about everyone, everywhere. Everything about us is bare and wide open to the all-seeing eyes of our living God. Nothing can be hidden from him to whom we must explain all that we have done. But Jesus, the Son of God, is our great high priest who has gone to heaven itself to help us. Therefore, let us never stop trusting him. This high priest of ours understands our weakness since he had the same temptations we do, though he never once gave way to them and sinned. Let us come boldly to the very throne of God and stay there to receive his mercy, and to find grace to help us in our times of need. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Amen. Could you bow your heads? I'm going to ask Brother, Brother Michael Thompson just to pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word. Your word is life. Your word is truth. Your word is powerful. We pray that, Lord, 
as your servant, encourage us tonight. We will open up our spirit and receive what you have in store for us tonight. Help us, Lord, just to push past feelings and allow you to minister to us tonight in a way that only you can. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. You may be seated. Amen. I know I have a little time, but I'll try to say what I need to say. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. Thought about tonight. Amen. And the theme that came was because of the times, we must believe. Amen. Everybody say, because of the times, we must believe. One more time, because of the times, we must believe. Amen. 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 Due to the fact of the period of time we are living in, we must believe. That's, that's all it really means. Due to the time, period of time that we are living in, we must believe. Amen. 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 We are living in perilous times. Amen. Challenging times. Amen. But we must believe. And what must we believe? We must believe the word of God. Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I must believe the word of God. I must believe the word of God. Please tell them again. I must believe. The word of God. The Bible says faith cometh by hearing. And hearing. And hearing. And hearing. And hearing. Amen. Amen. The children of Israel started out their journey. Amen. And the Lord gave them a promise. That when they were taken out of Egypt, they would go into a land, a land that was theirs, a, la a land that they could call their own, a land that nobody else could have taken them out. The Lord promised them that they were going into a new city, a new land, a new place of refuge, a new place of abode. Amen? Amen. We have read Hebrews chapter 4. And I've read it several times before, but, you know, just felt like this was a scripture that should be read tonight. Amen? Amen. I want us to understand that what we have sung tonight, the testimonies that you have heard, amen, we still need to believe, amen, we still need to have faith. In spite of whatever challenges we are going through, in spite of whatever situations we are facing, we still need to believe. Amen? Amen. I just want to stress that. We still need to believe. We still need to believe. Because you see, the children of Israel, they were on the same journey we are on. Amen. And they became frustrated. And it's easy to be frustrated when you're living in times like these. When you're walking or traveling, amen, you know you're going to get to the destination, but you just can't see the destination in front of your eyes. You can't see it. You can't see it. And just like the children of Israel, we have heard the leader encourage us. Listen, we're going to a land promised to us. We are going to a land promised to us. A land that is better than the one we were in. The land that some of us were born in. A land that we have heard time and time again is ours and God has promised it to us. Amen? Amen. And so the children of Israel, as we have heard several times, travel through the wilderness. Amen. Facing wars. Facing opposition. Amen. Amen. And so as they traveled, some began, or some of 
of those who were traveling became frustrated. They were tired of the wars that they were facing. They, they became weary of the fact that every time they made a step forward, there was someone challenging them. Someone trying to state claim that the land that they were supposed to march into, they were, it was not theirs. As they traveled, they had needs that they felt needed to be met now. And where they were in the past, they didn't have to wait so long for those needs to be met. For some of us, we think back to when we were in the world. For some of us. And we think, you know, I could snap my finger and I could get food and I could get money and I could get this and I could get that and I could buy a car and I could buy a house. But somehow, since I've crossed over on the other side and started this journey, it's not so easy. Everything is challenging. It's so hard to go into the pocket and go to the grocery store and say, give me everything I need, everything on the grocery list. It's so challenging. And so in Exodus chapter 17, they came upon a challenge. They were thirsty. They were parched. Now this was a need that was a basic need. Just to go to turn on the pipe nowadays, you don't know what's coming out. Sometimes you don't know if the water is clean. Sometimes you don't know if a drop you can touch and put on your tongue. So challenging. What kind of life is this? God called me to live, eh? But I say to us, because of the times, we must believe. We must believe. We must believe. We must believe. And they said to Moses, Moses, what is this? We are thirsty. There is no water. When we were back in Egypt, we could go to the river. We could go to the wells. And we could just pick up water like that. And that was it. But the writer says that Moses said to them, why are you testing God? It is not I who made this promise to you. It is God. God was the one who made this promise to you. Some of us are here, are testing God. We must be careful, as the writer says. We must be careful. It is God who has called us to this life. It is God who will keep us and satisfy our needs. It is God who will lead us to the promised land. Because of the times, we must believe. We must believe in the promise that God has given us. We must believe in the sure word of God. His word will not fail. The Bible says it. His word is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. The Bible tells us that God's word knows what we are thinking. It already knows what we are thinking it knows what is in our hearts already. And God has given us the word to help us so that we can believe. When we skip the pages, there are words there to encourage us, to strengthen us, to give us strength to carry on for the next day. We must Believe because of the times. We must have faith. As our quiz has said. As our choir sang. If we truly believe God is incredible. 
if we truly be believe that he's an on-time God, we need to just worship him and give him glory in spite of. Because of the times we must believe. Now I'm not questioning your sincerity tonight. But when you leave here, you walking through the altars, walking through the aisles, that question is going to come, Brother Neville. Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? When you go home and you turn the pipe and there's no water, do you still believe? When you go home and you open the cupboards, do you still believe? When September comes, do you still believe? Because of the times, because of the wars and rumors of wars and the famine and the pestilence upon the earth, do you still believe? Do you still believe in a God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we are able to ask or think according to the power which worketh within us? Do we still believe that word? Because the Bible tells me that in, in that time, the reason why they did not enter in was because of their unbelief. The writer says they did not mix the word that they received with faith. And the writer is saying the same thing can happen to us if we do not believe, if we do not mix the word with faith. It's not only about reading it. Reading it is good, but we need to believe. We need to believe what God says because of the times. Because there's no turning back. We can't go back to Egypt. Egypt is not going to welcome us. It's going to bone us and rip us apart. We need to believe for right now, today, standing on the promises of Christ my Lord. Standing on the promises of God. We need to believe. Can we just lift our hands and worship the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your word, God. Thank you, Jesus. There is deliverance for us. There is deliverance for us. It doesn't matter what we are going through. There is deliverance for us. If you have messed up in your walk, there is deliverance for us. There is salvation. For the Bible says, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Because of the times, we must believe that God will save us. And God will keep us through these times. Deliver us from whatever sin or weight we are carrying. We must believe that God can save us. Can deliver us. If you read though, that's what the writer is talking about. When he says the word of God is quick and powerful. He goes on in chapter 3. He makes a comparison with Moses and Jesus. And he continues over in chapter 4. And at the end, he says we have a high priest. Who has gone before us, brother Neville. He's gone up, brother Shea. He made sacrifice on Calvary. And he went up. And because he has gone up, we can be saved today. You can be saved today. Because of the times, we must.
must believe. Don't let the devil trick us. We can be saved. No one to him who is able to keep us and to present us. Say it like you believe it. You don't believe it? It's in the Bible and that's what we should believe. No one to him. Him, Jesus, who has gone up before us, made sacrifice for us in heaven. He will save us. He will save us. He will keep us. He will keep you and I. Devil would want us to believe that we cannot be kept. Young people, young people, young people, the Lord can keep you in this time. The Lord can keep you sane in this time. The Lord can deliver you in this time, young people. The Lord can do it. Don't trust anybody else. Trust Jesus. You have the Holy Ghost. Trust the Holy Ghost in you. God has said it in his word. He which hath begun a good work in you, young people. He which hath begun a good work in you. He is working in you. He is perfecting you. Every trial you face. My God. Every stumble you stumble. He's teaching you something. He is telling you, listen, rely more on me. As the grip of this world tightens and tightens and trying to squeeze out of us the promises of God, so we must squeeze and hold on to Jesus tighter than ever before. If ever a time I need the Lord, Sister Headley, it's now. It is now. Hold on to him for dear life. Don't let me go. Don't let go of him, young people. Don't let go of him. Because of the times, we must believe. Because of the times, we must go as well. And save others and tell others that you too can be delivered. You too can come out of the deep miry clay. You too can become unshackled. Those in your classes, those in the workplace. Sometimes we don't believe that they too can be delivered. Because when we see them. We see all of what from head to toe and we seem to be, as, to be afraid or scared. But they are going through the same thing that we are going through. They are struggling with the times that they are living in. They are feeling the pinch of the economy. They are feeling the pinch of the drought. They are feeling the pinch of no roof up, up above them. They are feeling the pinch of no food to eat. But what separates us from them is that we know Jesus Christ. We have the Holy Ghost down in our souls like the Bible says. And so if we know that, we must tell them there is a way of escape. There is a high priest. There is one who loves them and who will go all the way for them to be saved. We must believe that they need to be saved because of the times we need to go. We need to go to rescue the perishing. So many of our young people are perishing. So many so many lost, lost in the music, 
lost in the dance, lost in the working world, lost in the universities, because the devil has blinded their eyes. But Sister McLean, we can unshackle them through the power of the Holy Ghost within us. We can lay hands on them. Because the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. You're not hearing me. These signs shall follow them that believe. We must believe. We must believe. You know, I remember going to university and I remember one day a friend of mine said she was feeling sick. And I said, you want me to pray for you? And I prayed for her. I said, when you go home, drink some tea. She came back the next day and said, you know, I feel better as I go home, so I said, true. I said, yes, man. Thank you for praying for me. <laughs> These signs shall follow them that believe. <laughs> oh, yes, Lord. We must believe. Sometimes when it tap me, it's a sharp brother, never. <laughs> oh, Lord. But it doesn't stop God from working with our simple faith. Doesn't stop it. Because no, God knows what he's starting through that little interaction. He knows what he's starting. Because they will in turn be drawn to God. For they have seen the good works and will glorify God in heaven. They have seen our faith in action. They have seen us exercising our faith in God and because of the times that's why we must believe and when we believe we must act out what we believe and so if we believe God is coming we must act accordingly if we believe God can heal we must act accordingly if we believe God can save, then we must go because of the times. Because of the times. Because of the times. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. Because of the times, people are awaiting the manifestations of the sons of God. Are you a son of God or a daughter of God? They are waiting on the manifestation. Because of the times, we must believe. Believe. No more than ever. No more than ever. No more than ever. No more than ever. Could we just stand? The apostles believed God. They believed him. 
They believed him with their entire hearts. They believed that what he said was true. And so they went to an upper room and waited and waited and waited until waited anticipating anticipating the lord wants us to understand that we too must wait with that anticipation continuing to do what he has asked us to do believing believing acting out what we have heard as Paul said and seen we must now do because of the times because of the times I want us just to bow our heads hallelujah And I want us just to talk to the Lord for a little while, for a little, uh, maybe a minute or two. I know some of us have to go. But I've really, don't know, wrestled with this. If we truly believe what God says, why is it? That we behave the way we behave. Give the effort we give. Why is it that we, not, we are not going all out like the apostles? But the Bible tells me. We have heard the word. But we have not mixed it with faith. And so we will continue. To see results and continue. To live the lives we live. Oh, gee. <clears throat> Word is never wrong. Word is never wrong. God's word is never wrong. Never wrong. Never wrong. Never wrong. God is not a man that he should lie, the Bible says. His word is never wrong. Never wrong. Never wrong. Never, ever, ever, ever wrong. So for the next minute or two, let us talk to the Lord. I don't, don't know what you have gotten from this. And I won't assume. But whatever you have gotten... I want you just to talk to the Lord about it. Whatever you have gotten. If you haven't gotten anything, that's okay. I'm, I, that's okay. But what, whatever you have gotten, just talk to the Lord about it. Hallelujah.
I started out to follow you a long, long time ago. We've been on the mountain tops and through the valley low. But somehow it seems I lost my way through the cares of it all. But I remember a place where you spoke my name and I heed it to your call. Lord, take me back to that old landmark where I'll make a new commitment and begin a fresh start help me find my direction place a burden in my heart oh lord take me back to that old land I don't know how far I've drifted or how long it may have been but there's a hunger deep inside me to feel your spirit once again and whatever the sacrifice my first love to restore you see my soul cries out just to be with you like never before lord take
Jesus bless you. Amen. Please greet someone before you go. Amen. Do have a blessed and safe week. Remember our family fun day on Saturday. If you haven't given your names as yet, please do so. The list is by the foyer. You can speak to Sister Marky. Amen. Or any other individual who is on the committee. Amen. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you, Lord, give me you, Lord. Lord, give me 